example and we have one of the best examples right now because we have many of the investors and especially from the youth who can help and sometimes we say or I believe that it is very important to encourage the uh, small and medium enterprises and this is something very important for the country. When you left Egypt, did you expect to reach what you have reached now? Never. How, Even not how did you manage to, to, to achieve all this? Even not now. I uh, have been uh, famous in, uh, in uh, some countries like Denmark and Europe from uh, so many decades. Um, I never dreamed about it. I have never planned. Uh, my goal was only to get a bed to sleep on and to get a meal a day. This is only my ambition. Uh, but because I have faced a lot of um, discrimination, uh, pressure, it have put some power in uh, myself. Where that did you face it? I faced it in um, Austria, I faced it in Denmark in the beginning. Just because being an Arab? No, or uh, just because I met uh, some people uh, don't accept me. Not mm -hmm. because all the country don't accept mm -hmm. me, no. Yes. I'm spoiled today. Mm -hmm. in, uh, in Denmark, for example, I, I'm much more spoiled than any other people. Mm -hmm. I feel it even my family when they and are And the Danish things. citizens itself. Yes, mm -hmm. but uh, I met some wrong people, mm -hmm. and those wrong people have put me, put me under pressure, have put me in a uh, corner, have discriminated me. I have not accused them that is their it is their fault. Mm -hmm. I said, this is my fault. I am not developed enough to be respected. So I have to work to get the respect and get the um, experience because mm -hmm. I don't have education. And I worked for that and I got, uh, I never dreamed that I can achieve 1% from a million. So what did you have in your mind when you, when you, on the first day of going out of Egypt? I was lost. Mm -hmm. I was confused. I was lost. I don't know where I will sleep. I don't know where I will stay. I don't even speak languages. Uh, even uh, I have not uh, uh, achieved, uh, I cannot succeed in my high school exam. Mm -hmm. I don't have, I'm not a uh, smart guy with, or beautiful that I will uh, let uh, marry with a beautiful girl or yes. rich girl. I don't have any qualification. The only qualification I had, it was my traditions. Mm -hmm. I kept my tradition, my culture my beliefs, my family, what he taught me, my friends, and all those things was the, my power. That I came uh, out of Egypt, like I, you said, 10 English pounds <laughs> in my pocket. The other pocket, I have only the values, what I have growing up to respect uh, many uh, kind of people and the values my parents gave me and my family gave me, my friends and my relations. Mr. Anand, there is something that really I don't understand when it comes to Egyptians. Egyptians abroad are something completely different. They reach different posts that really we are proud of. We have now experts who are, uh, let's say, consultants from uh, for President Obama, for example, to, to solve the economic problem in the United uh, States. Uh, in different uh, European countries, they achieved a lot and they are very, very, very prominent. And this is something very important. You said that you face pressure and discrimination abroad. So again, it, happen it happens here because some people believe that it happens only in Egypt. No, it happens everywhere. But still, Egyptians cannot achieve anything inside. But when, we when they travel abroad, they are completely someone else. I want to understand this. Even you mentioned President Obama. I was invited by President Obama from two years ago in Washington, D.C. Um, I'm just I'm talking about the idea that President Obama is using an, Ingl uh, uh, um, an Arab man yes. or Egyptian man to solve his problems. Yes. In the meantime, I have an economic problem here in Egypt. Yes. Y you get my I know, point? I, know. I feel jealous because <laughs> I need that man to solve my problem <laughs> first. I will tell you one thing. Uh, I'm talking about Dr. Borai, of course. Yes, of course. I will tell you one thing also. Um, that is, uh, I never dreamed that I will sit as an honor guest beside the Queen of Denmark so many times, not only one time. In her right hand, a uh, few meters from where I uh, was sleeping in the streets. Um, I think the environment, and it's very important. You mentioned pressure and discrimination as well. Yes. The pressure and discrimination was the driving for me to achieve uh, experience and to fight 
to achieve respect. Why it didn't do this here in Egypt? Uh, in that time, I tell you, in that time... Uh, I mean during this time as well. Yeah, but uh, uh, I have faced also, when I started with my company, the first country I came to invest uh, out from Europe uh, and out from Denmark, it was Egypt because I belonged to Egypt. Uh, so I uh, brought the money, I brought the know-how, I brought the experts, and in the, some newspaper, I have it until today. In the Egyptian newspaper, official uh, newspaper, wrote uh, the man, he have fall to get a uh, high school exam, now he confiscates our hotels in Egypt. <laughs> other other um, newspaper wrote about me in Egypt, that is um, a Jew and uh, Zionist take over our hotels because they say his name is uh, uh, Galilee and he coming from Galilee. I'm respecting the Jew, I respect any religion as they are, doesn't matter, it's Christian or Jew, which you believe, but I wrote about myself and I have not even answered them. So the discrimination existing in Egypt and existing outside also. Um, but I always say, I have to prove myself. I have to prove, I excuse those people that they are accusing me. I don't fight against them, I don't want to make revenge, but I would like to develop myself, myself so I can be respected. So what can you say for the youth, the Egyptian youth nowadays who are they are easily frustrated and disappointed by the challenges facing them. What do you say to them? What is your recipe of success to them? It's no excuse today uh, mm -hmm. that uh, people don't have knowledge and don't have education. Yes. If you don't have education, you can get the knowledge through internet. Mm -hmm. So in my uh, time, when uh, you asked me that, um, uh, what, why you left Egypt mm -hmm. in that time, it was a um, uh, socialist country. Mm -hmm. It was. Uh, very limited opportunities, uh, even you have education or you don't have education. Uh, it was a country which have a very um, strong and major uh, national r role in the but area. Mr. Gal, we kind of have, have the same problems here in Egypt nowadays, the problems with education and infrastructure and unemployment. The problems haven't changed over decades. Do you think that th the right choice for the youth of today to go outside of Egypt just like you did? I think it's a different time today, mm -hmm. and I think Egypt, from my opinion, yeah. is you have the more, much more chances than outside. The other mm -hmm. countries already build mm -hmm. up, they build up their economy, they build up their, um, their infrastructure, mm -hmm. they build up cities, but here... There's a room to grow. Yes, mm -hmm. here you have thousands of kilometers, and the many sectors have yes. not developed yet, mm -hmm. and therefore, if they use will use their knowledge, their experience, their vision, and they made a mission out of the vision, so they can get much more better life standard, and the better money, and the better future in Egypt than they can get it abroad today, mm -hmm. while it is a it's different world today. Mm -hmm. But I think still they have a problem, and this is one of the major problems in Egypt, when it comes to routine and bureaucracy, and you find that you're going to have a project, but you have to move on from one desk to hundreds of desks finish something for example procedures or measures re related to the project right yes can we is there a way out of this i mean to to help people to invest because some of the investors that when they talk about egypt for example they say we when we come to egypt we have to make a lot of things and everything it has to be done in a certain place away from the first place and we have to move in a circle does this happen abroad uh, we no, abroad we, you don't have the bureaucracy like we have it in Egypt. And uh, I'm afraid that this is because uh, so many people from the um, former regime have been accused that so many new people today in the same positions, they will be afraid to sign or to give authority, authorities or to no give... No one will <laughs> sign these days. Yes, th I'm afraid that it will be much more difficult for people and uh, to sign in the official position because they can see all the other former regime doesn't matter in which level even uh, a normal uh, state employee being accused so i'm afraid that is now you will be afraid and you get more bureaucracy this decision have to come from the government to let the people believe the future for such uh, country huge country, um, uh, a country which have a lot of assets, 
a lot of values. I don't want to speak about history, about the religion, have been different religion are born here, different civilizations. I don't want to speak about the past. I want to speak about where we are today and how we can develop. Look how South Korea has been developed in 10 years. When I am in South Korea and some people find a paper in the street, they go down and take it and put it in the garbage. Uh, where we are, to, we have to change the mentality of the... Is there a way to change? Of course it is, because Egyptian is very smart people. Egyptian uh, accept different civilizations. Egyptian have mentality, uh, what we call it, um, uh, little fahlawa. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the main problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but they are smart, but... Yes, yeah. smart. It gets us into trouble as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it is also something that you can adopt different rules you can develop yes. you can and this we need to give the people beliefs and the, this kind of beliefs will never come without decision from the government to let the people be quiet and work by their hearts so the problem is in us of course yes. Yes. yes problem not only the government the problem also that we have to change our mentality to be more uh, civilized and more developed Look in our streets. It's not acceptable that we have, um, uh, for each worker we have outside in Europe, we, ha we will have 10 workers in the same position here. And the workers, some of them, I'm not against them, they're also my workers, uh, some of them sitting and do nothing. They have something to do, you can clean, you, they don't want to clean. And the end, we have a problem with the environment, a problem with so many. Uh, sectors because our people have to believe that the work is the most important and doesn't matter which kind of work they do. Mr. Ainani Galeli, the founder and uh, president of an international hotel group, thank you very much for being with us tonight on Night Cruise. Thank you. thank you. Now it's time to go out for a quick break and we'll be right back again with you on the program, so stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, we usually talk about the role of women in the society, uh, in economy, in everything. And this is something very important because women play a major role in the society. Usually what they achieve is not remarkable or as if it is something invisible. And this is something important to, to be discussed. Today we have the pleasure to have with us uh, Rola Tori. She is a professor uh, executive program executive and we have with us Isra Saleh head of social unit and they will tell us they have a certain project they will tell us more about it and this is something very important to be discussed hello and welcome to the show thank you hello. welcome hello uh, I would like to talk first about the uh, Anna Hona initiative yes. will you tell me more about the idea how did it come up okay uh, Anna Hona is a regional uh, uh, initiative uh, in four uh, uh, regional uh, countries, uh, Egypt, Tunisia, Jordan, and Morocco. And it mainly uh, tackles uh, and wants to cultivate uh, a, a societal discussion uh, about women and work and uh, women's role in uh, uh, the society, especially uh, economically. And actually, uh, Outhead Association uh, is part of Anahona Egypt uh, uh, team, uh, which mainly uh, uses the power of films documentary films and uh, uh, fictional films in order to cultivate this societal discussion about uh, women and work and the role in, uh, in society. Why usually the role of women is invisible? 
yet oh, okay. she is participating in everything in our life not because I'm a woman but she's responsible for a lot of things and the man cannot be responsible for all this sorry thank you very but much. you can never <laughs> be responsible to all what we are responsible to in addition to our work and to our life I think it's a very critical question question because um, in Egypt or wherever in Eastern communities we are masculine communities we always prefer to have men leading the uh, whatever in, in different fields uh, despite that women are the key and the cornerstone of yet not whatever, appreciated not yet appreciated that's why we have been thinking about different awareness campaigns different activities social activities uh, promoting for gender equality in different fields about Anahona especially we are promoting for gender equality in the working world uh, and showing how women can reach a leading role in different uh, 